Hey YouTube, this is Tyler Prepper One. I want to talk about water, water for fighting fires, water for irrigation, water for many purposes on a homestead. As you know, we had the fire uh, eight years ago that threatened the homestead, and then we had it just about a month ago that threatened the homestead. So these are positioned here uh, strategically to protect this building here. Uh, we will eventually move them after we use the water for watering the, gr the gardens or watering the grass. So let me give you some things that you need to think about if you're using totes to protect your property or water. First of all, make sure you put something on the back side of your tote. Even that few inches right there will let all the water run to the, where it needs to come out. Uh, if you put it on place and it's turned the other way, you might still leave 5, 10, 15 gallons of water in your tote. So another thing you need to think about, a lot of these valves are totally different, but some of these valves are extremely hard. Uh, my wife cannot open this up without a cheater. So Make sure you have a cheater available, a piece of PVC, a pipe. You can put it on there, and then anyone can open. It takes no effort to open that with a cheater. Without it, almost impossible. It's a struggle for me. I gotta put a little bit of oomph into it. Next, we tie these together. I used to tie them in by using PVC and plumbing them in all solid. Uh, these valves are threaded. The problem is lots of these valves are has different threads on it. So you gotta get the right piece. So, uh, a solution is for you to just use a Fernco coupling. And a Fernco will let you slide that on overneath the threads. You tighten this down and you don't need any special adapter. And the neat thing is you can have this and I could take this to pretty much, I haven't found one that would not fit on the 275 gallon totes. Slide this over, tighten this up and I can get water out. So. The reason we want this to be flexible is because we want to be able, if we step on it, knock it, drop something on it, it's not going to break. When this is all solid, very, very hard to move it because it's done. It's in place. It will take you forever. This way, I can quickly move this thing in seconds, literally. Undo this. I can pull this tote out of here if it was empty. Or I can actually lift it with my machinery and take it where I need it. So having the flexibility... This is the suction hose for the two inch pump. As we move down, we can I can connect five, six, seven of these totes again. The reason I want them connected in firefighting, it's really no big deal for irrigation, but for firefighting is when I hook a two inch pump to this, it will last three minutes and 45 seconds. So I don't have time to shoot water for less than four minutes, stop, go ahead and readjust my hose to the next one. So I connect them all together and I can then just use all the water. So I almost have 12 minutes of water out of these three totes. Uh, makes it much useful. Let's move down here. So this section right here, I can use this to attach it to just two tanks or three tanks or four tanks. I can move this with me. As you see, this is sideways. The reason we put them sideways is if you had it sticking straight down, it's gonna make a kink here where it goes into the ground. Or you gotta dig out the rock or dig out there. Just turn it sideways and it will still work just as fine. I also have a two inch on the end for the firefighting abilities. Uh, so I can push a lot of water. Or if you're running a utility pump. A lot of people said, hey Dave, you showed that one little pump that used DeWalt batteries. I don't have DeWalt batteries. I don't really wanna get into that. This is a utility pump that you can use off any power source in the sense of a generator. I have it hooked up to an Opus 1100. They don't even make that anymore, but I like it for this purpose. And I have this dedicated for this purpose because of the handles. My little guys can actually carry this. They can set it up. Uh, they know how to set this up completely and get water flowing. I think that's important in case I'm not home. The ladies could be home and the, the two young guys, they can be very helpful and get things set up for the ladies. So. Important to remember for a utility pump, this pump is either on or off. So always install a hose and that can't be shut off. Because if you put one that can shut off and someone shuts it off but keeps the pump running, something's gonna give because the pump's gonna be pumping, it's, something's gonna break. So turn the water on, turn the pump on. If you're gonna get one, get one that has a switch so you don't have to unplug it. It puts out a decent amount of water. The nice thing about this is you could hook this to a sprinkler, put it on the side of your property. So you're protecting your property if there's a fire or you're trying to wet things down. And you don't have to be over there standing there 
using it. You could go do another test. So I have a few of these and why, what we really learned from the last fire was we had a mandatory evacuation. We, we didn't go anywhere. Uh, law enforcement came to our house a few times. We just told them, hey, we're staying and fighting. Uh, and, and they said, that's okay. In some areas, they're gonna, they're gonna grab you and get you out of there. But the problem is they controlled all the roads. They controlled the access, so they limited people. And they limited people for a few reasons. One is a lot of people left. And so their homes were vulnerable. So they did that to secure the area. And it was really good to know that, hey, we don't have riffraff coming in our neighborhoods, uh, going to people's houses that aren't home. Um, but this is the problem. If they limited people coming in, they limited people helping. Uh, the last fire, I had over 30 some people at my property at the, when I really needed them. This time, you know, you had to actually go through a roadblock with sheriff's deputies. Um, so have things, a lot of pumps, a lot of things set up so you don't have to do everything. That way a few people can let these systems run and you're protecting your property. So water, very important. Don't take it for granted. You need it for all kinds of things. And I'm not talking about drinking. I'm talking about just watering animals. Cows can drink 30 gallons of water a day. Um, if you've got to fight fires, you're gonna use a ton of water. So think about your water plan for firefighting for irrigation, uh, trying to make food. Uh, a lot of you guys rely on a well. If you lose your electric, are you set up to at least get some drinking water? At least, you know, being able to protect yourself from fire and keeping your plants alive. Thanks for watching.